Brian here, quantlabs.net. What I'm going to show you is my first demo of uh, Stateflow, uh, which is part of the Simulink um, uh, pro a product within MATLAB. Makes sense, three layers deep by now. I've been wanting to show this for a long time. So may I introduce you to Simulink and, uh, and Stateflow all in one. If you come under uh, the SF demos, Stateflow demos, I've copied, I just created a duplicate uh, directory. In here, what I'm going to show you on Windows is how to basically do two things. Load in a, a Simulink model, and we're going to integrate custom C++ functions in a Stateflow chart. And then from there, also generate, co-generate the entire thing in C++. I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, let's get to the first part. MDL are Simulink models. Now, this is what it looks like. Again, this is a uh, stock uh, uh, example that it ships with uh, MATLAB whenever you get Simulink, state flow, all that stuff. And this is one of the examples. The key here is that you can take all your flow from your real world market data, which I may have figured out how to input into this part here. This is the model right here. Okay? So here this is I, I've referred to this and this is what it's called is the inflow. So this is the how you get data into your model, which is this entire system here. And then you have the outflow, which are these two pieces. So there's two ways you can do it. Obviously you can have a resulting value, and you can also uh, generate a scope. I'll show you that in a minute. So each of these are separate blocks. Uh, I've shown these before. This is Simulink, as I said. Very simple demo. Um, you know, just a constant that's being set up. Now the thing is here, what you need to understand is, is that this little guy is going to run forever. I, it took me a while to figure it out, but I, I figured a way. Or it, it, there's a message somewhere that states that, but I'll show you that in a second. So this little part in the yellow is, is your state flow. So essentially what it's going to do, it's going to call a function, my C++ function, add or output, and add or output. And it's going to do some C++ stuff, but it's going to interact. This, this chart is visually going to uh, interact with that custom C++ file and header file. Okay. As I was saying, uh, coming into state flow here, uh, the chart. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail on how this works. Uh, there's a lot of resources out there online from MathWorks that shows how to use state flow. Uh, for my members, I'll include this in the posting um, for these links. I mean, it's simple. Just look up state flow, um, documentation galore, uh, some, some videos, and of course the examples. And these are the um, examples uh, that uh, can be included with, uh, as I said, with the state flow that you get when you buy. And there's some good webinars as well, um, just so people know how to use state flow and some good overall tutorials. So the wheel's already there. I'm not going to recreate it um, to learn about state flow. Okay, so let's get back into state flow. So this little guy, these are different charts and they transition from one to the other and it's just basically adding a counter. So let me go back into the Simulink model uh, right here. Now remember this is Simulink the model which I showed earlier. This is a state flow chart so we go up one, one level higher. Um, and now uh, as you can tell it's going gonna, it's gonna to call uh, some C++ files and headers and these are them. I mean, the nice thing about MathWorks is that you can easily interact with uh, the whole configuration of of MATLAB. Even though if you're not experienced or fairly new, the references are here, right within the Simulink uh, annotation in the model itself. So this is the um, file that you get to work with, the C++ file. Um, the adder output is what's being used in uh, the state flow chart. Again, I'm not going to go into details, but I just want to show you that this is what's getting called from state flow, okay? Um, and also there's the header as well, okay? So uh, we know all about that. 
for um, for uh, calling C++ from Stateflow. Now again, this is really powerful because now you can add C++ functionality. You raise an event, you trigger something. This is proof that you can call something in C++, be it maybe interactive brokers, uh, the API there, or some kind of C file that you have, or a platform, or a DLL that ties back into somewhere else in one of your platforms or whatnot. This is why I'm showing this demo. Now, of course, you have to set up your configuration um, for the whole model, um, so so that you have to configure it. Um, so you have to include uh, what uh, header files and what uh, directory all the files are located, as in here. Uh, the target, um, you know, you include directories um, and which source files you're going to use, if there's any libraries it's going to call. So the configuration is very powerful. Um, and again, there's some boilerplate code that, and, and functions that you need to worry about for when you call a C function that you stay okay uh, here's my header file when I do initialization call this guy when you terminate call this this function so um, we've seen that which is in here all this stuff again this is all explained in the, in the documents and links I provided uh, and the next step is to do is to actually generate your final code so what it's gonna do uh, now this is where you need the um, Simulink coder or the state flow coder. I'm not sure, but let's just assume you need the simulink coder. So now, again, this is now going to co-generate this entire model. So you could have a model in MATLAB, and, and this could be, uh, this is just a very, very primitive and simple uh, uh, example, but you can have you know, this entire model, as long as it complies within the ecosystem of state flow and simulink, you can code generate that into C++. And hopefully you've seen this before. This is why I'm using Simulink. All right. So um, let me just show you that uh, code generation stuff again. So again, you can code generate in the C or C++. Okay. So let's do C++. And all you do is you just click build. It takes a bit of time. You know, uh, I'm not going to show you the project or how it's built. But if you go into the make into the um, into the console here in, in the command this is what it will look like when you do a build you start build and it comes back with a successful build no guff so let me show you some of the code because I'm sure some of you are probably um, dying to see that code um, let me just see uh, if I have it um, uh, yeah this should be it okay so all this stuff here is what's generated. Um, so in my case, uh, you could use this. This is the custom code that I just showed you. Uh, this is the, the entire state flow uh, code that gets generated from this process from the Simulink coder. Uh, this part here, this is what's generated uh, in this uh, folder here. Um, and this is all all of it. Um, it's it's pretty efficient code. I've gone through it. Um, it it's a very a very ex exhaustive process. But um, it, the the thing is, from my perspective, um, I'm gonna be sticking with C generation, not C plus plus generation. When I do this process, it just is easier. Um, C plus plus can be kind of hairy. A lot more code than you really need when you're generating models from Simulink. So um, in this case, I just went with the C++. Um, but it does generate. I'll probably put up some more videos on that. I'm sure a lot of people are interested. Uh, and I can tell you this, um, initially about a year ago, maybe even two years ago, I thought that uh, the MATLAB compiler or MATLAB coder was, was the holy grail. That's pretty strict. But when you work within the Simulink coder, it's a totally different process. A lot a lot easier to work with, a lot more flexibility. Um, a lot of the um, traditional toolboxes that you don't that are not supported within um, MATLAB, uh, some of those toolboxes are actually supported in the Simulink uh, ecosystem, as I call it. So, 
let's move on here. Okay, so I'm sure you're just dying to see this run. Okay, so let's go back in the model. Now remember I said that there's the inflow, so we're just setting a constant of five. Whoop de doo, right? Uh, we've shown you the the uh, the chart. Um, so this is the outflow. So this is just going to generate a a value in this what they call output port, um, and that, and then you also get a, a equivalent of a scope. So you get to see the values of what's being um, displayed in 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 the out of this uh, state flow chart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it all up. Um, hang on here. Oh, before I run it, let me just show you something. This is kind of important. Uh, um, okay, we don't want that. Uh, no, we don't want that either. Okay, uh, under my documents. Okay, so there's something I want you to realize. Is being on Windows, I'm using the Visual C. Uh, Visual C or Visual Studio compiler um, which is set up already but the one thing I want you to realize it, it will generate an application so if I run it this is a message that you'll get starting the model may run forever model stop time set to infinity okay so that message exists I've shown you that so this is just gonna run continuously so just come under here obviously click run and there's two things that you get to watch. So it's going to start running now, or it is running. So if I load up the scope, you get that, right? And that's all it's doing. But the other cool thing is that you can uh, actually run the state flow as well. So this blue is what's currently running. So the cool thing is that you could set up a, a breakpoint in here and, and debug it. I haven't tried that yet. Um, it's very powerful. Not only that, but let me just stop this whole thing. Um, yeah, okay, so if I go back into, uh, okay, so th this is one of the um, scopes that was running, and then there's a second scope as well, you know, whatever. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, what I wanted to let you know about this is that this model, uh, as I said, is very primitive. Um, but uh, what I wanted to show was obviously Simulink, co-generate this whole entire model, demonstrate uh, this state flow chart and what it does. Um, and as I said before, this inflow for a trading platform, this is what will change. So in my case, I could have this replaced, I, I could easily just delete it, cut it, and bring in another block. Uh, where's my library browser? Okay, and then and then there's blocks that I could easily load in. I don't know, whatever one it is, but you can easily, easily uh, replace this to read a CSV file or an Excel spreadsheet, so then when I have my uh, simulate or so my IQ feed data goes through a process to create a CSV. I can then parse that data and then automatically dump this into the into the uh, Simulink uh, model and run it no different than I showed you. Um, I could replace this as well and have like maybe a custom uh, what they call S function, which is a, another block that I write that will let's say read into a database uh, and then you can have the ability to stream your data into the model so let's say if I have tick data, minute data, hourly data, whatever it is I can have it flow through this little inflow piece here, the block and then it will execute and kick off into the rest of the model now this end here there's two options I have, I can log it I could uh, dump it to a, a MATLAB a flat file or a MAT file and then use that file for something else down the line for investigating in, in terms of testing, back testing or uh, whatever. Um, and at the same time, here within the Simulink core model, if it's state flow or Simulink itself, 
I could easily trigger, get this, trigger signals from this, because this is what essentially is here. These are signals. So I could create my signals and then execute my trades into my case, say interactive brokers through the interactive brokers uh, API and be able to uh, execute, as I said, my orders uh, through um, through uh, interactive brokers. Now, I could easily replace this as well with a fix engine uh, that will uh, connect me into uh, an exchange somewhere. Again, I could use uh, uh, I could also use interactive brokers or some other exchange. I could create a very sophisticated model that will easily uh, route which exchange I want. I can have multiple uh, outputs on. It's just it's just it's an endless uh, set of choices that I have available to visually design this and again uh, code generate this uh, into um, into C or C++. Okay. Um, oh, and here's my report that I get back. So this is the code when I code generate. So you see, it's 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 got some of the files that I've already used. Uh, it's got some utility files or helper files, um, and so on and so forth. Um, I don't want to get too much into this. Uh, the code is not too hairy. Um, actually, no. Let me just show you some. So here, everything's commented. Everything is commented. It, it, it's all, this is automatically generated. Okay. Now check out this. You're, you're not only going to get the code, but it's going to make a reference to somewhere in your Simulink model. If you have custom MATLAB M script, you can automatically through uh, trace point. I can't remember what it's called, but it will put the line of where it's generating that MATLAB M script file. It's going to put that line and then bang out the C equivalent or C++ equivalent in the actual C source file. Okay, so the codes can't, it's not too bad. Um, it's meant to be simple and small and short and tight and whatever you want to call it. But that's C. And the other reason you do Simulink is very simple. Okay, you have HDL, folks. Um, for those that don't know, uh, HDL is your, get your option to go into hardware description language, which leads you into FPGA. And FPGA being Altera, or Xilinx have gone on about this. Uh, both manufacturers have special blocks for Simulink that are meant for those plat for those boards, and they integrate with this HDL coder, um, and you can do some really cool FPGA stuff. Easily the best way, and easily the most efficient way to generate your HDL code or your Verilog or your HTML. So this methodology is very powerful. But as I said, the only thing I'm wanting to show today, or well, the whole thing, is this 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 state flow chart and the ability to call your custom C or C function as I've shown you before. This is the direction we're going in. I'm very excited to see this. It works great. Um, and uh, because of this, I'll be moving into some more private stuff for my membership at uh, quantlabs.net, my premium membership. So hopefully, this is good enough for you to get, wow, cool, let me join. Anyways, I'll talk to you later either way. Have a good day.